Okay, uh, I think we're good to go. It's, 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 like I said, I think we can apply a little bit of leniency because this is not a serious topic. This is just like, um, okay, first things first. I call this turtles all the way down. What's about, what about APMs? Um, the, the long story is that I've been doing industrial controls for 15 plus years before I started uh, talking about Mender, which does something completely else. If you ever want to talk about it, please hit me up. They pay me to do this fancy thing. But like I said, before that, I did industrial controls, and a lot of them. That's why I said, hello, my name is Joseph, and I'm a recovering embedded developer. It's, it's always nice to, to play in front of US people, because they get the joke. <laughs> OK, a little bit of technical uh, details. Uh, screen credibility, yeah, I've been doing Yocto for a long time. I actually snuck a couple of uh, patches behind Linux quality control and everything. Yeah, yada, yada, yada. And I repeat the warning. This is a 20-minute rant slot because it is sad. We are all facing it. Everybody who builds a Linux distribution is in some form is facing this by now. It used to be better back in the day. And I have absolutely no, no idea on how to fix this because we don't cause the problem, but we are the ones who get to deal with the fallout. So why? Everybody thinks they're a super special butterfly because everybody thinks that they is doing that right finally. And that means my, my slides are inverted because something is missing here. Yes, there is something missing here. I had a slide that, that uh, was saying um, what I'm talking about anyways, and, and that's APMs, Application Package Managers. And every newfangled language that I've seen since I learned C, is doing this in some kind of way. There are other ones who do, are doing it in a somewhat, ex, no, no, I don't want to say acceptable, and, uh, in, a, in a somewhat, in, in a way that can be, can be lived through. And then there's those who are just like outright crazy and they, they, they literally hurt us. And their, their reasoning is always, we, we know how to do this. We are special, finally. Everybody else has no clue, and we are doing it right this time. Like, uh, you know, XKCD, there's industry standards. Well, another one. And all of them are doing it for the one reason, because they want an ecosystem. They have a language, and this language should be powerful. It should be easy to use for the application developers, maybe even for those who, who want to hack on the application or open source it or whatever. So usually they are focusing on that. And they always neglect those who actually need to ship this stuff at scale. We are always the ones who have got the miserable lives. And why is that? I, I assemble a couple of things that those fancy package managers do. The stuff that I hate most is if you, if you kick off a build and then some, somewhere in your, in your CMake compile stage, there's a download happening. Why? I mean, are you downloading stuff just to, based on whatever command line parameter I give you or, or whatever? And if you, if you start thinking a, a little bit about it, they are downloading stuff. Why, why are they downloading stuff? What are they using it for? Why isn't it in the source? Turns out, actually, in most cases, it is a form of hidden dependency that you can't guess early. Some of them, that's what I meant with, um, are not as evil as others. They have uh, something like requirements text or so that is semi-readable to a human if they actually want to do it. And then there's who are just outright crazy and evil with their hidden dependencies. X and, um, okay, I'm gonna be uh, bad now. To me, the really worst offender that I've ever seen is NPM. Because I have, I have no clue on how to package NPM stuff. I mean, they, they do everything wrong. If you have this humongous tree of dependencies hidden that in, when, you, when you do NPM install, you have duplicates of, of libraries with conflicting licenses, with conflict, uh, with uh, sometimes not, um, not conflicting even the same chest replication. You have, you have them with this one is patched, this one is not. So you think I've got rid of this vulnerability. No, it's still there. 
And I mean, if you look at an electron um, application, uh, yes, I'm pretty sure that everybody of you has like seen an NPM in dependency tree of like 50,000 packages or so. It's awesome if a package has just like one line, but you include it like 5,000 times because everybody knows how to write pad left, right? And I mean, if you look at this, I have no clue on how to package this. Really. Any, anybody here? Do you know? You, you've never seen me live, right? So far. OK, sorry. I, I, this, is, this is one of, of, of my shortcomings here. I usually expect that people have seen me live before. <laughs> and seeing me live means if you interact with me, you get chocolate. <laughs> I'm, I've gotten, gotten pretty good at aiming. And Tim needs to be better at aiming microphones because it's, oh. it's up to you now. <laughs> oh, okay. So NPM is bad. Uh, so I mean you also mean like, for example, cargo for Rust? This, in, this is included? Yes. Okay. They, I, I mean, they're, they're not, as, not as stoned as the people who invented NPM. They are doing some things somewhat right, I think. But I mean, okay, maybe even the NPM people okay. have well, learned, so but. You, you're saying there's no way to do this, but in Debian we do package JavaScript from NPM. I don't know how the JavaScript team does, but they do. So maybe you could have a look. Maybe it's not done goodly. They probably patch a lot of things. I'm part of the Rust team and we do package some Rust. It's a pain, you will explain why. <laughs> but it's also possible. So yeah, I just wanted to chime in. Yeah. Very, very good point, because I'm actually referring to one of your um, packages things. This is, this is the usual approaches that I've seen in the field. And you, you, you can see in um, the second part that this is actually what Debian does. You're chopping up things as much as you can. And um, the only language that I've seen where this works to a reasonable extent it, to my understanding is Python. Python is, I don't like it, I can't write Python, I can't read it, I have no clue what this does, but it seems to be somewhat well behaved under some circumstances. Um, if you look at um, Yocto, that's my home turf, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be honest there. We have like a couple of hundred packages that do package one PyPy thing. It's usually just like four or five lines, but they work. And you can use the build systems, dependency tracing and resolution and everything to get this mostly sorted out. As far as I know, Debian takes a very similar approach. Chop it up, package everything, make sure it stays in the order that you envisioned it to do. Um, can everybody, somebody already see this break? I, I, can, I can't throw chocolates and microphone. I can cho throw chocolates. Somebody else needs to throw microphone. One at a time. Ready? Yeah, so for us in Open Mandriva, this breaks all the time as well, especially with the Rust stuff, uh, where sometimes you have it uh, pulling in the. Uh, one version of a library that, uh, that then pulls in another library that pulls in uh, another version of a library already used somewhere else, which would in any reasonable situation just uh, cause a clash of symbols. Mm. I mean, the right solution would be to add support for shared libraries the way they are um, meant to be to those languages, but I don't see that happening. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Our workaround for that is uh, where we can, we, uh, we just p uh, package the stuff the right way, which is similar to the way Debian handles the Python 3 dash whatever packages. And when not, uh, we just uh, grab the entire tree of the uh, dependencies, uh, package them as a vendor tarball, uh, as the Rust <laughs> people like to call it, and pull that in and uh, be done with mm -hmm. it. But obviously, that results in the same old problems as yep. uh, static linking. Uh, if we fix a security bug, it still ma uh, maintains itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we've got two hands up. First Tim, and then one virtual Peter. So uh, I believe that there's a root cause for this. And Application developers are fancy special butterflies. <laughs> no, okay. I, it's, 
Uh, and I think it's manif I, I'm most familiar with the Python because I've been doing Python for a long time. But it's people just refuse to. Well, no, no, I got to re rephrase that. Uh, <laughs> They don't have the discipline not to be backwards compatible. So you can't, you can't trust that. W that's why you get these multiple versions. Because mm -hmm. people, just, people just will not restrict themselves or they won't provide the support as they move their modules forward for the older versions. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the, with the hallmark in the industry being the Python 3 to Python 2 breakage. Yep. Uh, I mean that, and that was and that was just the tip of the iceberg. It went downhill from there. Python breaks regularly, uh, the module dependencies and stuff. So, mm. oh, Tim, just we had one virtual. You you've oh. earned your chocolate. How does okay. how, how do we get Peter up now? Wait, who yeah, yeah. You hear me? Oh, yeah, that's yeah we can hear you. Ah, perfect. Um, I, I think, think that. that uh, one, one big difference between the Python packages that we have in Jocto and the Cargo or Go pa packages is the difference in, uh, that the latter uh, typically depends on different versions of the same package, uh, which means it would be very hard to actually do the chopping up things for Cargo or hmm. Go. On the other hand, the the solution we have right now, where you include each um, dependency in the source URI, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but at least you get everything in the, in the reasonable right place. And uh, we can even manage licensing. That's, which that that's Bruce's uh, I don't go think approach. It would be possibly any other way. <laughs> yeah. Um, just thanks, thanks, Peter. The one thing that I wanted to add about uh, about Debian, you, you didn't, you didn't. Can, can I have a chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> to, to, tomorrow at breakfast. I know where, where you're sleeping. Uh, <laughs> um, out in the hallway. That also works. No. Um, the one, the one thing. Um, if you chop all of these things up and package them, you expect people to stick with those. And obviously, the first time I saw it was Debian 12 uh, bookworm. You, you do pip install and it says, no, you're stupid, don't do this, you will break your system. And I'm like, obviously, uh, yes, also this approach has, has um, shortcomings. Again, this is one of the approaches. There are other approaches. Ignorance. You just build something somewhere else, you fire up your Rust compiler somewhere, you get a binary, you package it up, and you just hope for the best. Until somebody sues you, you're probably fine. I mean, that's, that's, I, I, I recently learned that this is, the, this is the Android approach for kernels. You build them, you chop them in, and then you just hope that nothing breaks, right? What Alex. Huh? What, could what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Did you want the catch box or the chocolate? Um, both. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one thing I've seen um, with one of our company's customers is that we're trying to get something NPM-based work in Yocto, and that then it got so frustrated at that that in the end they took a Debian container, put it in Yocto, and then run their NPM stuff inside Debian. Because yes. at least in Debian, you can install what you want. Exactly. And, OK, now, Arnoux? I don't really understand. Thank you. <laughs> I don't really understand what the problem is with this build externally, because basically, the build system does the same thing. It builds stuff, wraps it up. It Kate. provides an SBOM with it, so as long as the APM does that, what is the problem with the build? Kate, can we approach? please get you started on externally produced stuff injected into builds? <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> That's the problem. You don't know anywhere what's going on because somebody makes a binary and then they claim this is, this is all proprietary code. I tell you. No. It's a binary. Nobody can see it. So it may... <laughs> That, but that's what that's what companies do, in my opinion. So you want back to the Okay. <laughs>
Okay, so going more concretely, if our build system asks uh, Cargo to build this package to provide me a binary and provide me an SBOM, what is the problem? That, that is not externally produced. That's ah, okay. in, that is involving your preferred deity. That is, hey, I can't control you, Bill. I don't know what you're doing, but I pray to whomever gives me beer for it to not break in my build process as long as I have to maintain this. Because that's, that's the other option. Either people have something that gives them a binary and they, that they inject it, or they, they do a, a do compile stage in, in Yocto and they just write npm i in there and hope that nothing goes wrong as long as they have to ship this stuff. Um, as I said, if as long as this thing in there behaves nicely enough to give you a license manifest and whatever, yeah, you're okay. But what happens if NPM or Cargo, for some ever reason, define that you can't download this anymore now because now we don't feel like it anymore. No. And that, that is the, the big difference because Yocto has a do fetch stage and everything is cached. Mm. You, 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 you skip that one. You have no clue. Yeah, you have. I'd have to say. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay we, 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 we skipped Thomas. Sorry. Oh, You're sorry. Next. Sorry. Okay. I was just going to say, I, I have to support Bruce's go-to approach because otherwise you're just doing a package manager within a package manager. If you're fetching, Within a package manager. Yes, exactly. If you're failing to fetch something because it's no longer there, at least you fail early. That's kind of a nice thing. I mean, Yocto, I used to use Gentoo. We did some similar things. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, the, uh, I guess uh, if your package, like your NPM, for example, if it fetches you the wrong thing when you're telling it to fetch a very specific version, then you can at least blame NPM. Yep. Updated Git revision, you know? Mm. Thomas is next. So I'm, I'm probably going to step on what Arnold was going to say, but just on the, just on the build root side, because you're talking, Jokt, I'm going to give a brief summary of on how we're dealing with that. Um, so for Cargo and Go, we're doing the third option that you have, but it isn't that bad because we're able to build a reproducible tarball. So we download everything at download time, and then we can do an offline build. The, the tarball is cached and the hash is the same. So we know at least that we have everything, and when we rebuild it, we rebuild the same way. So it's, we're using the, the language-specific package uh, management tool, but we are able to download everything first and have reproducibility. Mm. Uh, for Python and Perl, we're doing your second option, which is chop uh, things per package, and it works, I would say, fairly nicely. Of course, mm. that's a few hundred packages that you have to bump frequently, because of course, those people like to release uh, every other week. And then there's NPM. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's the point. Thomas earned your chocolate. Tim already, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, um, just housekeeping, janitory, and then, then Alex, okay? So, thank you everybody for joining me in this group therapy session. I told you, I don't have a solution. I just wanted to highlight that there's different approaches. Feel free to sync on everything because maybe then something good will come out of this. We would like this, it's just a mess. Like I said, we're doomed. Thanks for listening. Alex got the stage. Uh, uh, well, no, I want to uh, propose something. How about we make a conference where Rust developers are in the building, and then we get them in the room, like this side is system integrators, that side is Rust developers, and then we fight it out. Yeah, but, but the, the problem is, and, and uh, okay, that is... That's, uh, I think, for Kate or somebody from no, Linux but Foundation. That, that is, there are some worlds that don't connect, you know, face to face. No, but that is actually one of the one of the problems that I kind of like anticipated. Did you see that, ev or did you notice? Everybody said I have a solution for this one APM, but there's five others. Everybody's like, yeah, for Cargo we can kind of like fix it. Yeah, for Python we can kind of like fix it in a different way. For Go, uh, you can fix it in a, in another different way. Nobody knows how to fix NPM, but um, see, and next week some kiddo will co come up with another cool language and they will have another cool APM and they will do other cool stuff. And we, we have the Basil. same story again. Basil. I mean, isn't, isn't Meta Basil the solution to all problems? No, no. It doesn't have a dimension. <laughs>
I, hey, I mean, you, you work for a German engineering company. Every problem can be solved by another layer of indirection, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, not sorry. <laughs> um, so oh, 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 we've got a hand raised. Do I need to throw this at somebody? Yes. At whom? Um, Slava. Yeah, Slava, go ahead. Say something. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, since we are ranting, we should also not forget that. Um, so we were ranting about Rust and Go, but C++ folks also. Yeah, yeah, made sorry. Conan is managers. no better. I had them on the slide yeah, that I thought exactly. that I had. That's, that's exactly my point here. <laughs> Conan always see package, same problem. And basically, they just see it as from the application point of view, not from the system approach. Thank you. I have another rant, which is depend about on GitHub, which will bump the versions, even if it's not needed. And in Debian, we have to bump them back below to make them compatible. And like depend about in Rust, you have this minimal version that you can specify. But then depend about comes and say, well, you can bump it because a stream released something, but you don't need it. And it's really pita because <laughs> we, we have to go back and revert everything depend about those to make everything work again. So but I don't know why it depend about Bump's version for no reason. Let me let me take a positive spin on this. I like Peter, especially with Golic. <laughs> okay. No. That was a bad one. But like I said, thanks for joining me in this group therapy. I hope it was a little at least a little bit entertaining and we could all vent. Like I said, if somebody has a solution, please let us know. I know we are all renting and it's nice and all of that, but uh, <laughs> but like uh, we basically have multiple distributions like Gentoo and Riva and Debian, you know, like uh, Build Root and Open Embedded. Like uh, we used to have like the, the I think we still have like the distro kind of a uh, mailing list to talk between distributions, right? Yeah, I, does it I, exist? Yeah. I think cool. it is still. Well, I don't know how active it is. It was in the past when we were like bootstrapping, you know, like ARM64 and all of that. So. We, yeah, we need to at least like make sure that we move this conversation going, you know, keep going, right? Um, uh, otherwise, like next plumbers, we're going to be complaining about the same things, right? So, which that, is not necessarily a problem over a beer, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, is NPM better beer? <laughs> NPM is so. better with whatever substance you could ingest. No. <laughs> <laughs> having, having said that, I'm going to make a confession. I've written a lot of JavaScript in my life, and I actually like the language, but M NPM is still just ugly. Yeah, I think we're technically out of time. We could still yeah. rent for five more minutes before Alex goes up stage. No, two minutes. So two minutes. I, I think his, his slot is at, at six. No, five. Oh, I apologize. Alex? Yeah. And I've got some leftover chocolates.